The start of my Colorado trip was anything but smooth sailing. From van problems to constant rain, it seemed like I wasn't going to be able to get any sort of productive shooting in. But thankfully, even with all of these challenges, I was able to produce some good photos. But unfortunately, I quickly learned that this was going to be a reoccurring theme for this trip. It finally seemed like I had momentum on my side. I had a few great images in my back pocket. I had the van all fixed up and ready to rock and roll for the remainder of the trip. And with that fresh coating of snow all over the mountain peaks, it was prime for some great mountainscape photography. But while I was cooking breakfast, I noticed something that quickly quenched my hopes for the day. I had a water leak. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the back fitting there, not the red one, but the blue one, the bottom is completely busted off or came loose or something. I can't really fully tell, but that is what is going on. So I'm going to run to Home Depot. I should be able to grab one of those fittings. It's just a half inch shark bite fitting. Um, should be able to slide my water tank out. I am going to have to probably drain my water tank though just to make sure I don't have any water, more water issues uh, for the next little, for the little drive that I got to do. But God, every time I've come up to this spot, I've had an issue. With plenty of time to spare and a store only about 45 minutes away in town, I decided to head back into town yet again to see if I could patch up the plumbing before the evening shoot. Okay, I have good news and I have bad news. Good news, that fitting actually was not broken. Bad news, that means I have no idea where the leak is coming from. So, I drained this system, as you guys saw, to work on it. I am not gonna fill it back up because I just don't have the headspace right now to really deal with this. Um, it's not the end of the world to not have running water. I mean, my God, I camp all the time without it. So, I have water bottles and other usable water so I'm gonna be fine I'm gonna go ahead and go get my shots tonight because the clouds and the conditions look awesome and so I'm thinking about leaving this area to another area tomorrow anyway after sunrise so what I'll probably do is get my sunrise shot and then start working on this plumbing see if I can figure out where it is and then um, which, which I think is it's in the back somewhere which could be an easy fix or could be a pain in the freaking butt so Again, not the end of the world to not have water. So, um, yeah, I mean, because I have water, but pressurized water is not, it's not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do, head back up to the hills and do what I came here to do, and that is make some art. And create art, I did. Now this image in particular called out to me because the mountain looked just like the mountain from the Grinch movie called Mount Crumpet. Now my wife's favorite Christmas movie and honestly favorite movie of all time is the Grinch. So when I saw something that I could capture that I felt like she would enjoy, I had to jump all over it. But as I worked my way back up the road towards where I wanted to shoot my sunset shot and also camp for that evening, my eye was quickly taken from the grand scenes around me and I started to notice a lot of the smaller stories being told by nature and I'm happy I was able to capture some of these shots. And I feel like it's a rule, and I don't know if it is, but if you have a vehicle that you're proud of in an epic location, you have to take a picture of it.
You know, when I do all the crazy things that I do as a landscape photographer and wildlife photographer, it's moments like these that are exactly what's in my mind when I take my shoes off to wade through a freezing cold river or hike up a steep cliff to a middle, to a place I've never been before, all hoping for something like this, a moment like this. And these are the things that I hope I can bring back and share with you guys through my photography because it's moments like these that make me want to keep coming out and make, make me want to keep shooting. And my hope is through my art, I inspire you guys to get out and travel and come out to nature and experience moments like these. But you know, a photo will never do this justice. <laughs> Neither the video, the video won't do it justice, but I am very, very blessed to be witnessing this right now and, and experiencing this. So I made some friends. His name is Jeff. That's Edward. They've been with me the entire time, making all this noise, making it hard to record a stinking video. But, again, can't beat the views. So, thanks for letting me share your home with you this evening, Jeff and Edward. Now, I don't know if it's something that I said or what, but right after I filmed this, Jeff and Edward became the biggest holes you could ever meet. I was packing up and literally Jeff started to charge me and I had to stare him in the eye and tell him, if you come any closer, I'm going to have to use this bear spray on you. Now, thankfully he listened and backed off. So I was able to pack up my gear and I started working my way back down towards the van, down this open field area. And the entire time, Jeff and Edward were following me and letting me know that they wanted me gone. But I'm happy that they actually pushed me down that direction because I was able to find this scene that I captured handheld with my Canon R5.
Okay, this is why you put nice off-roading lights on. This is just my regular lights. This is my high beams. This is just the two LP9s. This is just the light bar. This is both. And again, regular headlights. Much better. Okay, why well, I am waiting for light here, let me talk to you guys about why I decided to rent the Panasonic S1R for this trip. Last year I rented the Fuji GFX 100S, which <coughs> was awesome. But I rented the Panasonic, which is actually, I think like a four or five year old camera at this point. I rented it for two reasons. First reason, Leica glass. I've heard a lot about Leica and decided to give it a shot. Now I do not have Leica money, but I definitely can see a image quality paired with this camera. It looks really freaking good. Now the other reason I went with the Panasonic S1R is this does a high megapixel, um, has a high megapixel mode where it will stitch multiple images together and create a 180 megapixel image, which is great for printing big, which I'm out here creating art for my gallery. So I'm wanting to be able to make big prints. Now my Canon R5 does a really good job in terms of image quality and making large prints. Um, but I've heard a lot about this and decided, you know, I usually like to have a secondary camera body with me, so I went ahead and rented this one. Now my Canon R5 also has the ability to shoot a high megapixel image, but it only does JPEGs at the moment, even though I think it's like a 400 megapixel or something like that, something crazy. Um, but I like the fact that the Panasonic does raw. So let me show you guys how it works. So what I've been doing is going in and using the crop overlays to compose my image, like so. I do a lot of two to ones. So it was also nice that it has a two to one aspect ratio option in there. Now all you do is hit menu, high resolution mode, and click start. And then you'll see it gives you the full three by two aspect ratio so that's why I've been composing and taking a test shot in before and then using this afterwards but then all you do is make sure that your exposure is set how you like it and click away you'll see it you heard it took multiple images and now it's going to stitch it together I don't know if this is going to come across on my camera but 
you gotta look at the detail there. That is really nice. I have been very thoroughly impressed with the image quality so far from some of the shots I've taken. Now obviously the moments have been spectacular, but this was a good rental. I went ahead and also processed a blue hour version of this image since we really didn't get a ton of epic light and direct light that morning and I wanted to see what you guys thought and here in the comments down below which one is your favorite so here is that blue hour version. Now last year, I also visited this location, but I didn't visit it in the best lighting or best conditions. The mountains were bare. I was there about noon, one o'clock, so the lighting was really harsh and hazy, but I made sure to take advantage of the opportunity to scout out different locations, and I made sure to photograph all of those different locations so that I had the images on my hard drive. So when I was studying the locations I wanted to go to this year, I was able to reference back to some of these shots. I'm really glad I did because I knew that once I had a few of those other shots in the bag that I just showed you, I wanted to go back and photograph this composition.
Now my photography was far from done this morning and on my way out to the next location, I was able to grab another series of images and this is how those turned out. Now my wife really loves the bark that an aspen tree has, almost more than the epic fall colors you get with them. So when I saw the light reveal this story to me, I knew I had to shoot it. As I was working around and, and seeing the light and understanding what the scene was telling me, I also found this image, which I felt like really tied together the whole story and tied up the series of small images that I was capturing. Now, while I was shooting these small, intimate Aspen scenes, there was a bluebird that kept on flying around and hunting in the different trees I was shooting. So I went ahead and threw the long lens on the Canon R5 and I was able to capture a few different images of this bluebird, and these are how those turned out. I was very pleasantly surprised with how these images turned out. I loved the blue contrast against the warm fall colors in the background, and the fact I was able to grab the shot of the bluebird flying was just icing on the cake for me. Now the lesson that I learned here that I wanted to share with you guys is don't get so caught up with what you are in a location to shoot that you miss out on what the moment is presenting you. This is the first time you have watched my content. Well, I want to take a second just to say thank you for making it this far and to invite you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the future episodes coming out. I have images and prints for sale on my website. If you're interested in that, then check out the link down in the description. I will see you guys though in next week's video.